don't know how you do it. <laughs> okay. What is it? It's probably going to fly in. They can ask the basic version. Uh, normally, we get uh, good results. This year, we had none survive. We'll show you this again. One of these, as Harry says, we want you to use zoom lenses. I use zoom lenses, but you'll see as we go along, some of them think they're my pet. Female. Even though they can see each other, they're still calling to try and locate each other. Now this particular room, you'll see this big one twice. Little lady I call Mama. Look at the picture here. Look at the picture You'll see how close she comes to land. As they say, she uh, and I were friends for over 16 years. Oh, someone else took it for me. <laughs> they showed me about a year later. Female, uh, the books and things will tell you the male picks out the nest site. In the 16 years that I knew her, she picked out the nest site. And she'd let the male show her two or three, and then she'd promptly go somewhere else. On this particular lake, we have numerous nest sites. That particular pair likes to nest right next to the water on the sand beach if it's there. One year there was no sand deep. The water had gone down so far that this little lady made her nest near the water. And this one was on a big slant, so they could take turns holding the eggs while they changed position. Different one. Each loon uh, here seems to like certain types of uh, vegetation or not. This is Ma again. This is her second attempt. Her first nest was drowned. This one, they let too much water out of the lake. I moved all kinds of boulders, but she still couldn't keep getting up there. Now, she did have a third nest that I never saw where it was. And that's who became the star of my book adventures with Great Nut. They found a chick all by itself on the lake. And I thought I was going to have a new pet, but uh, the mother and father did show up. They had been intruder out of their territory. Again, this is kind of to show you what she would go through, still trying to maintain her eggs. This is some of my first video. That's why I found the ground. I didn't understand. I should have gone up earlier on the water. This time. Now we're going to show you the chicks. This is great nut. Again, this is when I first met her. So I was trying to figure out how I could catch minnows with my hat. And this nice water repellent coat. Here's after the father came and got him. Sometimes twins will drive on the same parent deck and have to be separated. So I won't talk the whole time. Lots of twins, again, unless you saw them, they were pretty much the same size, even though one was a day older. What I found was the dominant chick tended to get left rise on the parent's back. On Lake Massachusetts, there are no great uh, public or water skiing. You can't even sit there. It provides water for Manchester. 
so it's nice that way. We don't have tons and tons of motorboats racing around. It's just an early morning fishermen who come out and they'll sit in one spot most of the day. These days with the digital, you can uh, zoom in digitally if your camera does not have a zoom. Oh. Ma is calling to tell her maid it's his turn. Time to time, she would come over and park the little ones next to me. Usually it was when she was gonna chase an intruder out of her territory. Some of the pairs of little barrel balloons allowed the kids, even then when they were way too big to ride on their back. And to tuck away, this was the first time I'd ever seen one stick its little head out on the side. That was five to eight years old. In that time period, it grew faster than others, depending on what lake they found and how much fish they could provide. And when I show these pictures to non loon enjoying people, they always say I should have fixed the red eye. They soon were out there using flash and just providing a red eye. Takes forever to convince them that we only try and get the red eye. Once you convince them that red eye is good, they want to know why the little ones have no red eye. You have to explain to them it takes upwards of two years before their eyes turn red. Again, this one on the back is a little large to be riding on the parent's back. They allowed uh, me to swim in uh, this lake so we could take the underwater video without just guessing where they are under my kayak. Little sunfish, um, yeah. So, we now have the eagles that have these at their home, same with the tuck away. I've never seen them take a uh, chick, and one year we had the eagles nesting right above a loon nest, and they seemed to get along. These are warning the other pair on the tuck away that the uh, eagle is out and about. The chick is on, yeah, going to show you where she was hiding. <laughs> yeah, that year they only had one chick and they were quite protective of her. Once in a while, the ospreys will set them off too if it's uh, still darker or the sun's going down. The airplanes they definitely go crazy for on uh, Massabesic. They put in an east west runway that goes right over the lake. Uh, and the male with his nice yolo. Female joining him with her tunnel up. They kept drifting closer to me. Again, sometimes uh, some of the pairs would bring the chick loader and have them park right next to my kayak when the planes go over. Just 
took them about three months to get used to the jets going over because the jets fly much higher than the planes. Another enemy on the lake, our great blue heron population that keeps increasing. This is Ma. Her nest was around the corner on the little island. Yeah, I thought she was going to get them. From that point on, he never came back to her little nest. The Anna's Eagle population, this one was on the tuck away. We had a single chick that year. Somehow they instinctively knew if they stayed near where I was, the eagle would not come down. They spent about an hour with me till the uh, eagle gave up and headed back south. Me, they were probably 15, 20 feet away. And again, the female who has the chip at this point kept drifting closer and closer to my kayak. And the little one wants to be fed, but they're not going to take the chance of diving to leave him exposed. Um, this was one of their first morning meetings. They hadn't established uh, that they were all friends at this point. This was after all the nests had failed for the most part. They would meet every morning. Intruder from her territory. That particular year she had twins, which we'll see in a minute. And she liked to leave them right next to my kayak if I was out there in the morning. Needless to say, I didn't use the zoom method. Her mates were uh, friendly to me. Other years, they wouldn't come anywhere near the boat, no matter whether she and the little ones were next to me or not. Meeting time. Females tended to take turns on past the D6. While the male would hand the fish to the female to feed them. Most of the time, the, whoever caught the fish would hand it to them. That's the piece of, for the most part, uh, whenever they were twins, they got along the whole time with plenty of fish. It was never a question of one not getting enough to eat and the other driving it off. And also, Crayfish. Chicks would eat the crayfish, others wanted no part of it. They can easily catch 
reading for themselves. Uh, John Swan Lake one morning, a chicken brown that age or younger was catching its own meal all morning. Come afternoon, it demanded to be fed. A number of the books and things say they parent brings the live fish, drops it, and has the chick chase it. I've never seen that. Well, we come out of the side, the chick is, they just can't the fish. Now, this one I haven't seen before. The chick wasn't hungry, so the parents keep passing the same minnow back and forth. underwater, hand it to the other one, and then the male finally ate it. We got tired of passing it back and forth. Now this one, it, it, and every once in a while they bring one that's too big, and here's the male who just came in with an even bigger one. And he didn't want to let it go, so he's going to eat it himself. He wanted to show his mate that he was doing his share. I don't want to go away. It's amazing to the size of the fish they can swallow. There was nothing chasing it, so I don't know why it was uh, so again. This one uh, practicing takeoffs. Here's a little juvie. This was uh, the end of November. It was actually one of twins. He was at this for about an hour before he ran this far. This male had been visiting the other male at the, uh, at the northern end of the lake. He didn't realize I was my kayak was there, that's why he had to make a little detour. Parking, oh, look, I've only seen one pair instead of twins mark. That particular year, the female grape nuts mother was only with male only the one year. Sometimes she has the same mate a couple years in a row. What's marking? Uh, you'll see in a sec. <laughs> kind of like uh, when dogs and things wet an area instead he uh, squirts out. Yeah, the white line is his uh, marking. This is he and his twin when they were a little older. The male has shown them to go up and mark their territory. It's just extremely in the water. They're quite pleased after they mark the fish territory. But again, I'd only ever seen the one their, their father and these two. I've never seen any of his mark in the 30 years I've been on that lake. Yeah, 
brother. He was a little smarter, only one about a foot off. This is the younger one. Still has most of his feathers. This is early July before the water gets full of algae and uh, other vegetation. Again, these I'm watching from above the water, just jamming the camera under my kayak and hoping I'm getting the birds in it. And Ma, who's banded. Next to my hand, she was a wise guy. I had a couple of times when I was out in the kayak after her twins had uh, gotten old enough to catch their own fish, she would catch a little minnow and bring it over to my kayak, trying to feed me. To tell you the truth, I don't even eat cooked uh, fresh water fish. The water at this particular spot in her territory was only about three or four feet deep. So hence the sun was able to come uh, into some fairly clear video. Uh, she's hoping to catch little minnows. Uh, there's also crayfish in that particular area. And most of the time, the little ones didn't catch anything, to tell you the truth. She, she and her mate would end up having to feed. What I call miscellaneous. This is the only male, or woman in general, I saw land with we fish in the mouth. They picked up a little minnow the other end of the lake. Plus, I always love this boat. I don't know what it's doing for them, because they don't fly this way. This particular male lost the tip of his bill. Although it did not look back next year, we did have one on the Lake Massabesic that was missing about an inch of his top bill for most of his life. Again, a little wing exercise. Some people said the little chick was mad at me, so he was uh, demonstrating. Sunrise. Again, these are more uh, actually leaves on the fall. In December of that year, my wife and I, and the twins were the only ones on the lake. Hear you. Fishing game stopped by and uh, we came back to the line and asked what the hell we were doing on the lake. A week later, these two uh, took off to the ocean. Ah, okay. Any questions uh, I can try and answer for you? That was very nice. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, there was very little new this year because we didn't have any chicks on the lake. So to get the little ones in, I had to use other years. Yeah, rain. <laughs> yeah. Are you able to tell the males from the females on site, or do you, have, do you know these two so well? Her I knew, but again, most of the time she was banded. So uh, if they're not banded, I have to wait till they either yodel or, well, the trouble is both can tremolo. So unless you it's hear. Only the male yodels. Yeah, so only the male yodels. Why, I don't know. Uh, physically, the throats are the same as far as I can tell, but only the males yodel. If they're, like, I see them and I can't tell. Are you, is the no, you usually can't. 
No. Uh, again, at one time they thought the males were always bigger and they aren't because I saw this particular female with uh, nine, I believe it was nine different mates over the 16 years. And they were all different sizes. She was bigger than half of them. And other times they'd be you know, huge compared to her. Yeah. More questions? No? <laughs> oh, sure. Do the bone genders do the same amount of feeding, carrying on their backs, nesting? Uh, they tended to, at least on Lake Massabesic anyway. Uh, again, we have eight territories on that one lake. And most years, at least six pairs, five to six pairs tried to nest. And we usually had at least one successful nest out of those, uh, except for this year. we between the water, kept drowning their nests. And uh, the only pair I'd ever seen uh, try more than one nest site was uh, Grape Nuts Mother. She would do it up to three times she would try. Yes, no. All right, well, if there's no more questions, I thank you all for staying for the show. <laughs> And hopefully next year we'll have more chicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for showing. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> All right. Again, thank you for being a trustee. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> meet you in Love Sleepers. I got a copy of Grace Lab. I read it like the first day it came home. Oh, thank you. Veronica. That there's been a testing pair every year for the past point of year. We have chicken about 15 of us that are tossing. And I've been just an avid, avid, prolific, not an expert, but the time for oh, yeah. so I've got crunch each year for 20 years. I picture the families. Yeah. Every year they're feeding between our swim club and our beach, they're just feeding the chicks right there. That's it's nice. It's incredible. Like, like, yeah, like it's right at my house. Oh, yeah, that's great. But anyway. Thank you. I'm going to be open to be reaching out sometime and just be making a chat more. Pick your brain. That's fine. Okay. Uh, I